just days after jurors convicted Ronnie O'Neill of double murder, they're now hearing arguments over what his fate should be. Prosecutors are pushing for the death penalty, saying his crimes justify it. O'Neill is no longer defending himself, and his attorney is asking for life in prison, using his childhood experiences as the reason why. 10 Tampa Bay's Bo Zimmer has been covering this case from the beginning. Joining us now, Bo, it was another really emotional day in the courtroom. Absolutely, and this was the part of the trial where we get to hear from both the family members of the victims and the defendant. And on the one hand, you have the loved ones who are dealing with the loss of their two family members. On the other, the man now convicted of these horrific crimes and the people who knew him best sharing new details with the jury they've never heard. The punishment for this crime is either life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or death. The ultimate decision for 12 jurors who already endured more than a week of graphic and often hard to listen to testimony in the Ronnie O'Neill double murder trial. The evidence in this penalty phase will show you beyond any doubt that Kenyatta Barron suffered those very strong emotions of fear and horror. Prosecutors pushing for that death penalty had medical experts testify what the victims went through on the night of their deaths. I could only characterize it as um, marked or severe. Severe pain? Yes. But then it was the defense team's turn. Public defenders taking center stage after O'Neill spent more than a week defending himself. Wednesday, they presented the jury with all new claims, including that O'Neill himself was the victim of sexual abuse. You're going to hear that when Mr. O'Neill was just five years old, that he was violently and brutally raped by family members slash family friends. They say that, along with trauma from a more recent drive-by shooting, impacted O'Neill's behavior on the night he murdered his girlfriend and daughter. They also plan to call a psychologist who was among the first to evaluate O'Neill shortly after his arrest. He has a genetic disposition to having this delusional disorder because what you will hear is that Mr. O'Neill's biological father also suffers from a delusional disorder. The defense reminded the jury their decision would likely be among the most important of their lives. You are never required or compelled to return a verdict of death. Never. One of the key things in this penalty phase is that O'Neill now has an attorney after representing himself throughout the entire murder trial. And Bo, how's that going to impact O'Neill's chances of then getting the conviction overturned? Well, attorneys say that will come down to his competency. He's had a public defender on standby during this entire trial, but now an attorney is trying to make the case that O'Neill should get life in prison. To get a deeper dive, we asked criminal defense attorney and former Pinellas County prosecutor Roham Kansari if that change would have any bearing on a possible appeal. I think it'll have bearing as it relates to this death penalty portion of it, the penalty phrase, um, whereas it'll show that he's had competent counsel to make the arguments as to the mitigating factors. I don't think him choosing to have an attorney represent him on the penalty phase itself is going to have a bearing on whether he uh, was competent and should have been representing himself on the primary case alone. And Kansari says if O'Neill was granted an appeal, any witness would have to testify again and would be subject to a new cross-examination. And that would include his son, who was one of the key witnesses in this trial. Hillsborough is part of the second district court of appeals year to date. There have been 755 appeals filed for criminal cases. The year starts over on July 1st. And part of O'Neill's case about his co competency will be uh, how he has had previous delusions. A psychologist is slated to testify first thing tomorrow morning. This trial has been incredibly intense, and of course, we're going to have continuing coverage on our website, on our 10 Tampa Bay mobile app, and on our YouTube page as well.